Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode we're going to try and fulfill the contracts that we were aiming to fulfill in the previous episode where I failed because of a throttling error. And so again four contracts we are going to attempt to get into a particular orbit around the moon and that will fulfill both this lunar orbit contract and the specific orbit contract and then we're going to transmit science from lunar orbit and so that will fulfill this contract and then we will smash it into the surface of the moon which will fulfill this lunar impactor contract we are going to try to do it with the same rocket and so lunar goose stalwart was already constructing and I've added another one to the queue just to uh, occupy the second slot and since that these rockets don't cost that much they're 17,000 apiece and we now have 900,000 funds so it's worthwhile and I plan to use the stalwart for other things so if it turns out we don't need this launch we can uh, sort of we can still use most of it for other things and then cannibalize the actual probe so yep that is the plan we're still waiting for a lot of technology here but uh, yeah the best uh, policy is to make use of the time to fulfill these contracts we have 271 days for the lunar impactor and lunar orbit contracts the position of a specific satellite in a specific orbit around the moon is a lot longer so uh, if that turns out to be very difficult for some reason uh, we can avoid that priority is to get these two done first okay so that is the plan and I'm gonna proceed to the launch okay so here we go uh, well we have to line up with the moon a bit so I'm gonna time warp through that looks like the launch clouds feed everything in properly I'm time warping so that's good and the tr trick here will be to make sure that I get some sort of trajectory that will hit our intended orbit around the moon with that uh, Arab stage right because I have to make sure it burns out the Arab stage that's always been a little bit of a trick it takes a long time to plot that okay anyway uh, ignition and launch Okay, looking good. Oh, there wasn't anything else I needed to fix with this rocket. I forget sometimes. Okay, everything is looking good. It's not two more minutes until booster separation. We've got uh, much less time before that, but it's not showing it properly here. I don't know why Megchev has such trouble figuring out that the boosters need to separate earlier. Okay, 30 kilometers, still looking good. Let's go to 40 degrees pitch. Still got a little more on the boosters. Looks like Mac Jeb isn't gonna help me here. Okay, set. Okay, very good. Another 1 minute and 50 seconds on the core stage. Thrust weight ratio looks fine. Well, we do have to remember that we've got the Vanguard and the RD-0105 up there. Those take a while. Okay, 30 more seconds on the core stage. Everything looks alright to me. Apoapsis is going to be a bit high though. Okay, separation. And ignition. Alright, ignition is good. It looks like our fairings are mixed up, so let me get those off. This should be fine. Uh oh, I pressed spacebar and it didn't do anything. Let me try that again. Okay. Antenna's out. Okay, it looks like Smart ASS isn't controlling it properly. I didn't do the normal switch out. There we go.
Okay, we are completely flat. Uh, looks like, you know, it's not like we're gonna have a problem with time to apoapsis this actually. So, yep. Still getting quite high there. Two seconds. Stage is out. Okay, a little bit late on the ignition, but we are still good. And let's get Smart ASS back on it. I was late because I was switching off of Smart ASS temporarily. Alright, so time to apoapsis is 2 minutes and 42 seconds. Stage time is about double that. Looks about right to me. We'll just remain flat and it should work out. Okay, I've uh, pitched down a little bit because we are getting close to tomorrow. We're not going to burn out this stage, so the whole idea of using the stage time as a judge is a mistake. Okay, getting ready to shut down. We don't have to get the periapsis high. We'll just get it to 200. Okay, that's good enough. 800 left in this stage. Well. What can we do? It's meant for larger payloads after all. So, okay, we'll take that and let me start plotting. Okay, well, this looks like the best I can get it. Minimizing the inclination as much as possible and making sure I'm burning at least 3,124 meters per second. The problem is that I don't know about line of sight with Earth or any other satellite that might help us. We've got a far-flung one there and we've got one there. Uh, there's no guarantee I'm gonna have that communication when I'm at periapsis and without that it's gonna be a little bit tough. Obviously we're going to have to correct inclination and uh, get into orbit at the same time. That'd be the best way to do it. But that hinges upon me having some sort of communication when I do that. We'll have to plot as we get closer and see what we can do. We might have to do something suboptimal, in which case we might have to uh, reconsider the getting into a specific orbit contract and just do the other three. Okay, so anyway, uh, this is the plot I'm going to aim for. Okay, we are four minutes ahead of the node. I'm going to try and turn now. Forget what the stage time is. Uh, 7 minutes 25 seconds, so we're not too far off from that. So, propellant on the Air B is... No, okay, but well, it's now stable. I was about to say risky, but now it's very stable. There we go. Let's get the marker there. Oh, nope. On the tank. Uh, not on the Air B. Okay. Throttle up. And step. And ignition. And this time, don't touch the throttle. I'll have SAS point at the node. And we should just burn out this stage. It looks like the stage delta V is a little bit more than I thought. Uh, I think we used a lot of RCS and that reduced the amount of delta V on the maneuver. So we might go a little bit past. Okay, about a minute and 15 seconds left, and now it looks like we're falling way short on the Delta V. It looks like uh, 20 meters per second or more difference, so that's a bit weird. I mean, well, it's not that weird. I mean, it's because of the radial difference between... Well, anyway. It's... It's going according to plan. It's going according to plan, I assure you. Uh, we'll have to make some corrections, but we'll be alright. At this point, I'm gonna take Smart ASS off, SAS on, and I'm gonna turn RCS off before this finishes so that it doesn't overfire. I'll make the adjustments manually to make sure it's done right. Wow. 50 meters per second left? That's not what I intended, but okay. Um, still pointing in this direction. Well, RCS on and uh, let's fire it. Let's see. Okay. Alright, 100 
Well, that's a bigger gap than I was looking for. Hmm. Maybe a mid-course correction is in order? Well, unfortunately, we were at the ascending node. <laughs> well, let's still try a mid-course correction. Let's see what would happen. Well, this 4.5 meter per second burn does do quite a correction. If I do too much more, you'll see that the that the orbit now doesn't uh, touch the target orbit, and that's not good. So we do want to keep it touching the target orbit like this. If we could get the the location where it touches over here somewhere, where we could still see Earth, that would be great. Well, let's keep it like this for now. Let's try this correction. For starters, we'll use the fuel in this big tub. This should be close enough. Okay. Forward. And... Let's see how it goes. Well, that's close enough. Okay, so we'll try that out. It's all about communication now. If we time warp, the upper core goes into low power mode and looks like power generation is stable. Fuel here, we still got a lot of hydrazine to use for corrections once we enter Lunar SOI. So on the whole it's looking good for at least three of the contracts, the only question is really the, the matter of getting into that orbit. Okay, here we are in Lunar SOI and everything seems to be alright. Um, I think that's our target apoapsis I'm seeing there. We don't have an apoapsis, right? We have a periapsis of 118 kilometers. Oh, I got a signal right there. Okay, focusing on the moon seems like a good idea. So how is line of sight going to be? Well, definitely, well, I don't know. And our periapsis will be just coming into view of the Earth. We'll, we'll have to pass periapsis a little bit. How bad off will we be if we wait till, like, say, here to retroburn? That's the question. Uh, we will be a little bit off if we try and do it like this, but maybe we can do some fixes. Uh, let me come back to you once I've tried to manipulate this properly. Now, the problem is we we have this sort of inclination issue if we could do the burn right at well right there where we're crossing that orbit that'd be great but obviously we won't be in line of sight with earth at that time and looking at the situation i don't think we'll be in line of sight of that satellite or that satellite at that time either Now we could have enough fuel to correct this, but that's unlikely. I mean, it's uh, well. Let's see. Well, how much does that sort of inclination change cost? 151. I guess it's doable. It might still be a little bit tricky to get the periapsis and apoapsis right, though. How much is that now? 233. It's possible. The trouble is I don't actually know the delta V of the top portion. It's RCS only. There are no thrusters. It's just RCS. So yeah, it's sort of a question mark. Alright, well we'll think about this possibility. Right now we can fulfill one of the contracts, right? Just science data from space around the moon. Maybe we should wait. Let's make orbit first and then do it. 
Yep, uh, so we're going to aim for that orbit and we'll start off by having this stage turn us and then we'll do the burn. Okay, we're passing behind the moon now. Obviously don't have a line back or to any of the other satellites, so as I expected. We do have local control now. As soon as I see, okay, we have a line back, it looks like. I trust that that's enough. Okay. All right, so uh, let me turn to the node. Okay, SAS on. Okay, well, this is uh, well ahead of the node. So we could probably point closer to retrograde, which would be better. So I'm going to do that. It'll be a little bit more efficient. And okay, I guess I'll have to release the this big tank and hope that I still have connection. Uh, let me let it settle down first. It's using a lot of RCS to stop wiggling. Okay, separation and there seems to be a delay oh uh, I haven't unlocked the hydrazine he there we go oh it's gonna take a while it looks like long burn time I will point to the maneuver node then because that's probably necessary anyway I wonder why it seems to be partially, well it is partially an inclination thing. Okay. Alright, well it's gonna be a long time before this RCS can get us into orbit, so I'll come back to you when it's over. Okay, we have the camera change, so we are now in orbit around the moon. Let's see if Kerbal agrees, not quite. The camera agreed, and MechJib agrees, but this little curved path, path does not. Not quite yet. Okay, now we have an orbit, so all we have to do is collect science. Let's see if there's anything we haven't done from these instruments first. Nope. Nope. Nope, still high over the moon, that's why. Observe biosample then. Okay. Now, uh, the specific orbit needed the goo container, right? Is it going to be a problem if I've already used the goo container? Oh no, it does didn't need a goo container. It just says antenna and can generate power within that. Yeah, so it doesn't need the goo container, so that's fine. We can transmit this data. Okay. So that should fulfill lunar orbit and science data from space around the moon. Now, either get into that orbit or not, and then slam into the moon. That's our goal. Okay, we're still uh, pulling our orbit down here, but it's looking like the hydrazine situation it's not going to be enough to correct our inclination to match the target orbit. So we are in orbit and we can do the impactor thing I think but what we can't do is really correct the inclination so that we can get into that orbit in particular. We'll need more fuel for that. So we'll have to build a better probe. And that's something we will do but probably not the next episode. I, I want to try some to do something different next time. We'll have to see what uh, contracts are available and I'll judge from that but uh, probably not trying again for this particular orbit but uh, yeah just a little bit more fuel not too much more we are doing some inclination correction here you can see that uh, our current orbit is here we're trying to get into that one so that we eventually cross that one we are uh, increasing our inclination uh, aiming for 152 so we're actually a little bit past that 
but that's because we wanted to cross that orbit at some point. I mean, we would cross the orbit, but at a good point is what I wanted. I think right now I'm just going to aim to try and make sure that we impact the moon. We are running out of hydrazine here. So let me turn pure retrograde, which should bring our periapsis down. Maybe not fast enough from over here though. Okay, I'm gonna shut it off and wait till apoapsis and just bring our periapsis down. We're pretty short on hydrazine right now, and this is not the optimal situation. We're still over here. We're far away from periapsis, but sort of in the middle of nowhere on our orbit. Okay. I don't know if that, we're, we're still high over the moon. I don't think there's any new science to do. We probably shouldn't have even brought these things. We've done uh, one item of science, and that's really all we've got. I get the feeling that is not how they generally did lunar impactors. They generally just went straight into the moon. They didn't uh, get into orbit first. <laughs> we've been uh, doing it a little bit differently. Okay, now it should make a very convincing thunk. Still on the opposite side of the planet, though. Well, we could take some pretty good photographs of the surface from here if we had commu uh, communication with Earth. We should put some communication satellites around the moon. Maybe that's something we should do next time, but we'll see what contracts we have. Okay, well that's that, and that contract was fulfilled as well. Okay, well let's go back to Space Center. Right, well we are over a million on our funds right now. And we've got 90 science there. Not that there's any point in spending this. Well, we could get uh, upgrade points if we spend the science, I suppose. But we've got quite a long list of technology that's just waiting to complete. Let's take a look at our contracts. Well, we've got a polar orbit one. We could do that pretty easily. Science data from space around Earth. Easy. Um... Explains. I'm still not entirely sure that's safe. Got another lunar impactor contract. Mars flyby. I don't think we have any antennae to communicate with something going on the Mars flyby or a Venus flyby. Let me uh, check how long that's gonna take. I'll yeah. Let me double check that. Okay, so yeah, we needed this uh, electrics, and that depended on this improved instrumentation, which is already queued. It'll unlock in 40, 41 days. It doesn't have any better antennae. It does have these solar panels, but those aren't particularly better than the ones we've got right now. Those, these aren't uh, folding out or anything. Electrics does have solar panel arrays that do fold out and it has the antenna we need and we've got enough science to research it so let's research that it says 622 days and we've got an upgrade point unlocked I'm gonna move that up so yeah I'm sure all the other technology was very important survivability sounds really important and some of these could finish pretty quickly but Oh, I want that one. Move electrics up, electrics up. Basic capsules would be nice, for instance. Um, let me quickly take a look at what's in survivability. That sounds most important. Oh, uh, hope it's not a precursor to this. Oh, survivability was the heat shields. Hmm. Well that is interesting not enough science to research this, no we're already researching it silly thing okay so survivability is the heat shields but uh, if we want to make a Venus or Mars transfer at these times we'll need those electrics at the very minimum but we'll need to go much faster well, let's uh, increase our R&D, but it's not quite enough. I guess I'll buy some more.
A million fun should be fine. Let's see what this does. Four hundred sixty-three days. It's still not enough. Uh, I don't like the idea of spending too much, but hey, what can we do? Let's go back to nine hundred thousand. Three hundred sixty-nine days. Well, we're getting closer. Let's just go for it. Um, let's go for Mars. I think Venus might be a little bit too quick. Is 25 days really quick enough to build a rocket? Well, I guess if we rush it. Rush build costs 10% of the rocket. We could do that. We've got the funds. Hmm. Okay, well, well, we'll call that a plan for now. I'll see. If we get more funds, we could speed things up even more. So, uh... We don't have any other active contracts. Let's see, what else could we do quickly? Uncrewed moon landing. Hmm. I could try that. We need a bigger rocket. Successful reentry isn't that valuable. This is much more valuable. The satellite contract is pretty darn valuable too. Oh, that's not the one that we have. Uh, this one gives 150,000. Well, then this should be the priority then. We'll, I guess we will try and do this one again next time. And maybe we'll even try this one. Actually, this one's easier, huh? It's higher up. Since it's not as tight, it's easier to change stuff. Yeah, okay. Uh, let, let's pick this up as well. Right. So, yeah. Plan for next time, we are going to build up funds by putting satellites around the moon, hopefully, and using those funds to increase our R&D speed, and thereby unlocking the possibility of doing a Mars mission. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.